Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Kevin Cosby here in Louisville, Kentucky, St. Stephen Baptist Church with another powerful point to ponder. Thank you so very much for being with me today as we continue the theme we began yesterday, and that is what to remember when you don't like yourself. I told you the story about the ugly duckling. That wasn't a duck. It was a swan. It was a, a swan egg that happened to roll onto a duck farm. When it hatched, it was different, and the ducks made the swan feel like it was no count. And unfortunately, the swan began to believe the duck's evaluations on the misevaluation of the ducks and the duck experts about who the swan was. So the swan didn't think he had any potential and didn't like himself. And uh, it was later on in the story that the, 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 the swan who thought he was an ugly duckling, found out that he wasn't a duckling anyway. He was a, not a duckling, but was of a higher category of bird, namely a swan, a swan, the envy of all the other birds. Now, uh, it does not matter if the swan was a swan, and it was a swan. If the swan thinks it's a duck, guess what? It's a duck. If the swan thinks it's the ugly duckling, it doesn't matter if it's not the ugly duckling, the swan is the ugly duckling because everything rises and falls on how we self-perceive and how we self-perceive deter will determine how we self-identify. That is why the book of Proverbs says this in Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 23. The writer of Proverbs says, be careful how you think. Your life is shaped by your thoughts. Your life is shaped by your thoughts. So if the ugly, if the if the swan thinks he's an ugly duckling, then his whole life and world will be limited to being the ugly duckling, and nothing will change until that swan starts thinking like, you know what, I'm a swan. I'm not what people say I am. I'm not the ugly duckling. Listen to me. Long before psychology helped us to see that our thoughts uh, determines our feelings and our feelings determines our actions. Uh, the Bible tells us to be careful about what you think because your world is shaped by your thoughts. You will never change your actions until you change your thinking. When your thinking changes, that's when your action changes. When the ugly duckling stops thinking ugly duckling and starts thinking swan, that's when the ugly duckling becomes a swan. And even if it's a swan, but it thinks like an ugly duckling, it will always remain the ugly duckling. That is why true change from the biblical perspective changes with the way you think. Paul says, be ye transformed transform, which means change. How? By the renewing of your mind. Now, how do I renew my mind? How do I change the way I think? You do it with your self-talk. The things you say to yourself. Do you realize that we are constantly talking to ourselves? It's what's called inner dialogue. We all have an inner dialogue. People in the Bible had an inner dialogue. The, the Bible says the fool have said in his heart, there is no God. So this man has talked himself into a belief that there's no God. Or the woman who had the problem of hemorrhaging for 12 years. Remember, she said to herself, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. She's talking to herself. Remember the prodigal son and the prodigal son was in the hall pen. And he says, I'm going back to my father and say, I've sinned against heaven and against thee. He's not talking to the hawks. He's talking to himself. He's 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 having an inner dialogue. And we talk to ourselves, listen to this, at, at, a, at a rate of 1,300 words per minute. And you cannot avoid to talk, to stop talking to yourself. Even when you are asleep and you're dreaming, we are told, psychologists got this thing right, that when you dream, it is your subconscious trying to send a message to your conscience. And that's why it's important to, to write down your dreams and, and interpret them because your sub, something's wrong. Subconscious is saying this is what's wrong. Your conscious part of you doesn't want to deal with it. But the subconscious is dreaming, saying, here, let's deal with this particular issue. So we always are talking to ourselves. The question is, what do you say when you talk to yourself? I talk to myself all the time. But you know why I talk to myself? I talk to myself because I love to hear intelligent people talk. I talk to myself because I like to talk to intelligent people, so I talk to myself. 
What do you say to yourself when you talk to yourself, when you talk to yourself at 1,300 words per minute? Suppose each one of those 1,300 words is, I'm an ugly duckling, I'm an ugly duckling, I'm a failure, she doesn't like me, everything's going wrong, I'll never get out of this. Well, if that's what you're telling yourself, then your reality becomes a reflection of what you are telling yourself. Now, I'm not talking about mind science and you can think your way out of sickness and you don't have to take the vaccine because you can think your way out of COVID. I'm not trying to say that. What I am trying to say is our thoughts and what we say to ourselves has tremendous power. One of the tricks of white supremacy is to make us think we are less than. That's the, it's a psychological thing. That's why Martin Luther King Jr. once said that the greatest um, uh, contribution that the civil rights monk struggle had was it helped black people develop a sense of somebodyness because everything in our culture and in our society told us we were nobody and you can't become somebody if you constantly think you are nobody. What do you say to yourself? Job chapter nine, verse 20 says this, it, I am innocent and faithful, but my words sound guilty and everything I say seems to condemn me. And everything I say, what do you mean everything I say condemns me? He's talking to himself. He's condemning himself. No one has to condemn him. He's condemning himself. He's the one that's saying, I can't achieve. He's the one that's saying, uh, I'm no good. He's the one that's saying that I can't own anything. He's the one. It's not what other people are saying to him. It is what he is saying to him self. And that is why it is important that if we're going to overcome the damage of negative self-talk, that we must begin to say to ourselves what the word of God says about us. And that is that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. Let me tell you how you determine how valuable a person is or anything is, and that is the price someone is willing to pay for it. How do you know a Lamborghini uh, is, is, is valuable? Because of the price that someone is willing to pay for the Lamborghini. How do you know the certain purses that women wear and, and, and put on their shoulders is an expensive purse because it's a expensive purse because of the price women are willing to pay for it, or our red bottom shoes. I don't know if those are still in, but red bottom shoes. If a woman has some red bottom shoes, why are those, the, it's the price that you're willing to pay for the red bottom shoes. Because the price of something, or the cost you're willing to pay for something determines the value of the particular item. How do you, I know you are viable, viable, valuable from the word of God because of the price God paid for you. You were brought with a price, the Bible says, and here's the price God paid for you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And the more scriptures you can get in your spirit about what God says about you, and how God has added value to you because God loves you. Well, listen, my brothers and sisters, the more you're going to be able to overcome the scourge of not liking yourself. All right. Begins with what you're saying to yourself. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. And thank you for the price you're willing to pay for us by sending Jesus into the world to die for our sins. I pray that healing begins in our minds and our heart about misunderstandings of who we are so that we might be everything and every person, everyone you've called us to be. In Jesus' name, amen. Peace and blessings to you. Thank you for joining me again with another powerful point to ponder. If you don't have a church home, well, I'd like to invite you to become a virtual member here at St. Stephen Church. Uh, contact us, email us, newstart at ssclive.org. Well, peace and blessings to you. Pass this uh, teaching on to somebody else, especially someone you know who desperately needs it, who does not like themselves. And we'll pick up on this theme again tomorrow. But until tomorrow comes, by the grace of God, don't forget to stay safe and stay sane. And by all means, please get the vaccine. I'll see you tomorrow.